Hey friends, welcome back here to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. My name is Hunter on this Friday, December 19th, 2025. We have a warmer weather pattern ahead as we go into Christmas week, including Christmas Day. Our chances of a white Christmas are dwindling across the United States. Oh, I know, don't be clicking off this video just because we have warmer temperatures. It's just weird. It seems like everybody, when I talk about warmer temperatures in the winter, they're like, ah, I'm not going to watch this YouTuber anymore. You know, winter's over. Folks, winter is not over. I think as we go into January, we're going to see changes again that will bring colder and snowier risks back to the United States and Canada. We just got to be patient. So we're going to walk you through, comb through the data, get you the latest winter weather information that you need here in this video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And without further ado, let's get into the forecast. And here's what we see at midday Friday. We got a lobe of the polar vortex that brought an Arctic front through the Midwest here yesterday evening with some gusty Northwest winds. You probably heard the winds howling out your window yesterday in the Windy City there, Chicago especially. And then over here into the Northeast, that's where that lobe of that low pressure is with that trough and then we have a big ridge that's going to be developing across the southwest but we're not done yet i think we have one more blast of arctic air this one won't be as strong as the one we just saw but this one will be moving across the upper midwest great lakes as we go into the weekend bringing us that cooler air and then as we go into christmas week you see a lot of orange building yeah that's a big high pressure system as we have an amplifying trough across portions of the east pacific it's going to amplify the pattern even further downstream making that ridge a lot stronger in the central and eastern U.S. So let's focus on the here and now. We have an Arctic blast moving through currently across the Midwest into the Ohio Valley. Wind chill still sub-zero. And then as we go into the weekend, we're going to see a secondary push of Arctic air, albeit a little bit further north as we go into Saturday and Sunday for December 20th and 21st. This could bring some sub-zero wind chills back to parts of the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and New England. But notice the colder pinks are sitting up here in Canada. That's because of two things. We have a, a deeper snowpack up here, and B, that is where the tropospheric polar vortex is setting up shop. So you have have those two working in tandem of course you're going to have some coldest of the temperatures up to the north so Yukon the Northwest Territories Northern Canada in general will be under the ground zero for some cold air as we go through the weekend now let's look at another strong low pressure that's developing in southern prairies of Canada and Saskatchewan here on uh, this afternoon 979 millibars that's a pretty strong low and that's going to move across southern Canada it will weaken some as we go into Quebec and Ontario for the week Weekend, but it will bring some more winter weather impact. So let's look at those here. Here's the first system that we saw yesterday, still bringing some moisture across the Northeast and parts of Southeastern Canada. Most of Southeastern Canada seeing snow from this as it's on the colder side, but there is snow wrapping around here, even into portions of New England as we go into the evening and overnight tonight. That could bring us some opportunities for accumulating snow. Here's our low pressure that is on a weakening trend. It's pretty strong right now, but as it pushes through Manitoba, Ontario, and then Quebec, it's going to be weakening, but still bringing some snow opportunities to southern and southeastern Canada, parts of the northern Great Lakes going into the weekend. Big high pressure, 1031 builds as we go into Sunday morning. That is going to be our Arctic high. That will be bringing us some more sub-zero wind chills back into the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and New England as we go into the weekend. And then there's that atmospheric river for Sunday, bringing lots of moisture in to Northern California, especially Western Oregon, some higher elevation mountain snow out here. It's going to be a mess across the West. So let's divvy up and look at the or totals, right? This is your liquid precipitation. Notice across the East, we're going to be seeing some decent amounts of moisture with our system here that we saw move through yesterday. The remnants of it could be seeing still an inch, inch and a half of rain across portions of the Northeast down into to the mid-Atlantic and then we look at the west we are seeing a lot of rainfall with our atmospheric river our second and third system coming in this could bring us some real heavy downpours for areas of northern California while still seeing several inches into western Oregon 
and Western Washington State, lesser amounts the further north you go towards British Columbia, at least for the form of rainfall. Now we look here at the Weather Prediction Center's uh, excessive rainfall outlook, are watching for the potential of some flooding here along down east Maine, down here into southern portions of New Hampshire, into Massachusetts, and then a marginal risk in Northern California today going into your Saturday morning. More in Northern California, another marginal risk Saturday going into Sunday. Then as we go from Sunday into Monday, I think that ramps up again as the atmospheric river really starts to pummel Northern California with several inches of rain, a slight risk for excessive rainfall and flash flooding for that Sunday into Monday time frame. And that really kind of lingers into the middle of next week. Now, where it is coldest, that's where we're going to see the snow, and it's going to be piling up in the mountains out west. Southern Canada could be seeing a few to several more inches of snowfall. And areas south, though, of the Great Lakes, really not going to see much going through the rest of this weekend. Now, going into Christmas week, we are going to see a strengthening trough just off the west coast of Canada and the United States. This is a very, very interesting pattern because the trough is going to be deepening in the East Pacific and typically when this happens downstream of that trough is where you see a ridge of high pressure begin to develop and a strengthening trough will mean a strengthening ridge because the pressure gradient here that we're going to see over the Rockies and look at that ridge with the airflow around it clockwise of course with a low pressure trough off the west coast the airflow around that is counterclockwise so you get the idea of the airflow but let's look at the uh the warmth that we see going into christmas so remember the airflow around a high pressure is clockwise so it's going to be pulling in a warmer air from the south and the gulf is warm right now and it has been warm for quite some time notice as we go into next week you see a lot of orange and red there for the lower 48 while the coldest of our air our true arctic air will remain to the north up there in alaska and western canada which makes sense because look the deep snowpack resides well up to the north. It's not like they have a couple inches of snow in British Columbia. I mean, British Columbia and Alaska have been getting pummeled by snow so far this season, and that is where the coldest air will be, just simply because it's enhanced by the snowpack, and that's where the trough of the tropospheric polar vortex resides for Christmas Day. So, here's Christmas Day. Make no doubt about it. It's going to be a warm Christmas. I'm not going to sugarcoat it by any means. It's going to be 40 degrees above normal right here in the nation's midsection. Our temperatures for highs Christmas day are 50 and 60 degree line going to go well up into the Midwest, into Nebraska, Iowa, Northern Illinois, through Indiana and Ohio. Our freezing line is going to go all the way up to the international border there between Canada and the U.S. You have to go way up to the north and northern Canada to see some real true Arctic air. And here is the pattern. Here's the European models. We go into Christmas week, maybe some quick hitting snow potentially for the northeast, some lighter events there. But the atmospheric river has no end in sight, I think, as we go through Christmas week. It's going to be a unsettled, quite honestly, miserable across the west coast with a lot of rainfall, a lot of snowfall moving in. Here's the GFS not really showing much different here with an atmospheric river just pummeling California. Now, we could use the snow in the watershed out west there in the Sierra Mountains. That's some great news as they have been lackluster with snow so far. But looking here at the long range, I mean, we just don't really see a lot of big winter storms in the middle of the country through the rest of December, and that's because of the warmer air. So looking at rainfall, the anomalies from average, you can see very much above average to well above across portions of the West coast, including most of California, as that Pacific jet has migrated southward. So instead of hitting Washington State and Oregon uninterruptedly, now it's going to be hitting California. So it's a little bit further to the south. High pressure ridge is going to be promising some drier weather, not bone dry in the eastern U.S., but drier than average here, uh, what we see in late December. Here's the snow track. It's going to be further north, no doubt about it. Otherwise, it's the mountains out west. Sierra Mountains could get really hit hard by some snow fall over 100 inches between um, the last 10 days of December going from this upcoming Sunday through the following Thursday there on January 1st. Now, as we go into January of 2026, our snow and cold lovers that are out there, winter's not over, okay? In early January, still might feel like it's kind of mild and you're probably wondering where is the winter weather pattern 
Well, it's not far. It's really up to the north. Our neighbors up there in western Canada kind of hogging all the cold and snow for now, but don't get too used to that because we're going to be seeing some cold diving down possibly by week two in January to the east with warmer air in the west, and then we start to see more colder air coming in when waves as we go toward the second half of January. That's the latest trend. This could change a lot, so we'll keep an eye on that, but here is the snowfall orientation for the month of January. January. It still does look pretty snowy in the north. There's no doubt about it. So don't give up hope if you're in the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Northeast, even in the deep south. There could be cold shots that could bring some surprise snow events here. We've seen that even in recent Januaries as well. And look here at the week by week. So I think as we go through week one, it's mainly to the north, especially the mountains by mid-January, maybe a stronger snowstorm track for the Midwest Ohio Valley. And then as we go into late January, maybe a warming trend might see more mountain snow out west. And then again, yes, British Columbia, just getting more snow as we go into late January. That is what we see, at least with the trends right now. So instead of clicking off my video and stop watching me because of the warmer weather and coming in for Christmas, just continue to watch the weather forecast. Trends can emerge. We can continue to see winter weather forecasts um, with winter storms and snow and ice and all that colder air as we go into January. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to keep it real on here. I didn't sugarcoat it at all. I gave you the information. I gave it to you um, straightforward here on this video. So make sure to stick with me. We'll keep you updated on the latest winter weather forecast as we go through the rest of the season and into spring as well. By the way, my spring forecast is not too far off. We'll be putting that out later into February. So thank you all for watching and I hope everyone has a wonderful and warm rest of their Friday out there.